<laughs> oh my god, it's creepy. There's another one. Look at that. Oh my god. Yeah, look at that. That's beautiful. Hey, I'm Bennett. And that's Dawn. And we're in Dutch Harbor, Alaska. And folks, look at that view. This is why we're here. We have a fantastic episode for you. We're going hiking, we're going fishing, and we have an amazing historic museum to show you on the beautiful Aleutian Island of Dutch Harbor. <laughs> it's a we are 900 miles from west of Anchorage in the beautiful island of Dutch Harbor, Alaska on the Aleutian chain in the Pacific Ocean. The sea is angry today. This is Prayer Rock. One of my favorite spots on the island of Dutch Harbor, Alaska is this bay. It's called Summers Bay. It's absolutely gorgeous. My wife's doing what she loves to do best out here and that is beachcomb. There is so much to find in this sand. Everything from beach glass to um, ivory from walrus and other bones. So just a few more weeks, this water will be full of salmon swimming upstream to spawn, but they're not yet here. This is a great spot to find the America's national bird, the bald eagle. Absolutely gorgeous. We're so glad you could be here with us. You're gonna get wet. Ah. So we found something interesting that you guys might like to see. This is called, this is the type of kelp. You see how long it is. It's either called I think it's called bulk kelp or bulk kelp because of the big bulb. I'm not sure. Maybe somebody who knows the answer could help me with this. But I'm told this is edible. Uh, some of the native folks slice this up, clean it, cook it, and sometimes pickle it. I don't care for the taste. I've tried it a few times. Maybe I'll try again some other time. Or if someone has a great recipe for this stuff, please let me know. Kind of looks like a dead sea creature, but it's not. It's just it's very common in Alaska, but type with kelp. And it just it floats to the surface. And that long thing goes down into the into the ocean. Kind of gross. What is that? Yeah. It's a fake. It's a baby starfish. <laughs> Look at that little tiny. Look at him. <laughs> you can't bring it all, money. Goodness. <laughs> He's cute. Baby starfish. Oh, that's a. Look at this. Yeah. What is that? Is that a starfish? It looks. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Careful what you touch in there. <laughs> Starfish there. So this stuff is super slippery, this stuff. This is basically kelp. Tidal, the tidal surges here are really, really high. What, anywhere from 5 to 25 feet, maybe even higher in extreme tides. And so all of this is way deep underwater at normal tide. So we watch it as it goes out and comes back in. But you can see all of this is normally underwater. Starfish over there. Purple stuff is called lupin. It blooms everywhere. And the deep green with the purple. And then the backdrop of this ocean is absolutely remarkable. It's cool, crisp. A fresh air from the ocean. A little bit fishy. That's something. Oh, honey, this is some type of living organism. All right, let's see what it is. All right. Touch it with the rock. I'm Be about careful. to touch it and see what it does. Touch it on the tip. You see there. it moving? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's creepy. <laughs> what is that thing? Oh wow. If anybody knows what this is, please leave it in the comments. He sucked all his little tentacles in. Uh -huh. Wow. This is Dutch Harbor, Alaska, and we're going fishing. And I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. So uh, wish me luck. We're on the side of the road just below the airport in Dutch Harbor, Alaska. Trying a new fishing spot, we're jigging for, um, we have a little bait that's called a jig. We're jigging for rockfish. No luck so far. You guys can see that's a sea otter right there. And they're so cute and they're so pretty. And he dove right as he got close to me. We got a fish. Oh, it's a little tiny rockfish. Those are super good to eat. I believe that's called a black bass. Yeah, look at that. That's beautiful. It's a little black bass. Oh, that's good to eat. Really, really tasty. Dutch Harbor is famous for their foxes baby foxes in Dutch Harbor, Alaska. One of the great things about living in Alaska is this right here. They're not worried about us at all. They see people all the time. We have these beautiful baby foxes and they're not afraid of me at all. And he's, you know, they're just eating and they're just curious. They're looking for, I wish I had something to feed them. They're probably about six, seven months old, maybe even newer than that. Hey, little fellas. This is Visitor Center for Unalaska. 
Aleutian World War II National Historic Area. ADAC is 382 miles, Kodiak is that way another 529 miles, and we're even farther away, about almost a thousand miles from Anchorage. Super excited that it's open. Okay, let's go. As you walk into the museum, you see this map, and it shows the Bering Sea, and then, um, and then the Northern Pacific Ocean is just below those islands. To the right of my finger on the mainland would be Anchorage, and then out where my finger is, 900 miles out is the beautiful island of Dutch Harbor, Alaska. The Aleutian campaign was from 1942 to 1945. The Aleutian Islands are the setting for a little known story of how America was forced into war to reclaim her own soil during World War II. It all came too soon according to this story. In June 1942, just six months after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Japanese bombed Unalaska, which is Dutch Harbor, where we are right now. There was only one phone the locals were able to call out and notify our nation and our nation's military that they were being attacked. This plaque tells the story of what it looked like and you can see on that image that is the smoke plumes and the aftermath of what it looks like as the Japanese bombed this little tiny island out on the Pacific Ocean. This glass case it shows some of the artifacts from that time period and some of the amazing photos. In that glass case is a copy of the newspaper from says Japs also bombed Midway. It's absolutely fascinating the history that was preserved here in the raid on Dutch Harbor in 1942. Some old images show some of the flight crews, some of the airplanes used, and it shows a helmet and a gas mask. This plaque here tells the story of some of the fighter pilots and the brave crews that came out here to defend these remote islands and some of the brutal conditions they survived in. On this plaque entitled The Escape, it shows some of the tools they used, a bayonet from a rifle, and some of the squalid conditions in which they lived. As you can see, this is uh, partly dug into the ground. It's more of a bunker than a home. Muddy, cold, and very wet. And this is an absolutely fascinating photo here. The Navy ships parked outside Dutch Harbor. The push westward shows to the right would be Dutch Harbor and then Anchorage, Alaska, 900 miles away. And then to the left would be the other islands that were taken by the nation of Japan in 1942. Some of the raw and brutal stories are captured in this plaque. It says, hidden in their camouflage revetments, hidden under the bodies of their own dead. The rifle in this case is a Japanese military rifle. The Battle for Atu, this plaque, Battle for Atu 1943, shows what it looked like during that time period. In this glass case is a model, a replica model, a scale model of a Japanese Zero. The Japanese Zero was a small fighter plane that was famous for its time for being very nimble and very dangerous to the enemy. This is a beautiful World War II museum in the town of Unalaska in Dutch Harbor, Alaska. And it commemorates the battles that were fought here, hard won and hard fought, uh, when the Japanese Empire invaded this area and bombed it in World War II. Considering my wife is a registered nurse and a hospital administrator, this board is uniquely interesting to me because it tells the story about the heroic nurses and medical professionals that ran the underground bunker hospital here during World War II and after. Lieutenant Mildred Terrell, chief nurse, reports to Dutch Harbor early 1943, the first of eight Navy nurses to join the Aleutian Theater. I love this board right here because it tells the story of what well, life was like in this very remote and dangerous area of Alaska during World War II. They had what they called an official sweater girl. Her name was Martha Driscoll. It's named the official sweater girl of the Aleutians. And she toured the islands with the USO for morale boosting. And this I love because it's a replica of the radio station and these are the original radios that were used here in Dutch Harbor during the war. And they've got the guy sitting here. Some of the airplanes used in the war. This is a really good map. It shows you where we are. Back this way is the Alaskan Peninsula. Over here would be Anchorage, Alaska. And as you fly down the Alaskan Peninsula, This is Aquitan, and this is Dutch Harbor, right there. We're almost a thousand miles from Anchorage. This is another 
day in the life in the great land of living by Alaska. Alaska truly is a great land. I consider it a blessing to share with you these moments of our amazing life. If you liked the scenes from this video, then I am super excited to show you something I think you'll really love. Join me on our next video. Let's go there right now.